this is Alekius, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Now there have been a request from several people now to do a custom battle. Seriously, it's set in 1916. Um, the request, the most specific request I've had is basically Jutland. And, um, Find it interesting that it's pretty much set up for that already for numbers. Oh, uh, I'm going to do this. Will be a relatively large battle. Is just do the capital ships for now. See how the performance works out, and if the game performs well. Uh, we'll go back and we'll add in some support ships and maybe get a little bit bigger. Okay. And it was requested to do it as the U.S. Why is it auto zoomed out and auto zoomed in? Is this the same ship? No. That one is indeed bigger. Oh, it's a different dockyard. It's that dockyard. That's why it jumps around. Okay then. Okay, with all this in mind, we don't get to save this ship, by the way. Build our dream ship, which we can't have. To oil, forced, best auxiliaries we can get. Prop 3, how sad. Yeah, we'll probably get rid of the orbit protections. I haven't had much use for it. The I'm not sure we'll need increased shells, but we'll be there. Now, so many choices to have make here. I do want to look at the citadels again. Comparing some of the costs. It was citadel for the rest of this. And it are fast. There's so many ships. Oh, 19 inch. That grows. Long range or getting close? A battle where uh, radio will actually be useful. Okay. Alstite is a good go to to start. Just because it combines muzzle velocity, damage, and range. Probably the best range, if I remember correctly. It's been a few days since I played. And I'm finding that the way the AI designed ships, I don't really need the penetration, even using Lidite on occasion.
Fortite's not a bad option because of that. Two powder for max penetration. And TNT, of course, is fairly solid. But I think we're going to go with the Ballastite. That really is good for the range. Seriously, you provide me a slot. Oh, because it's. Uh huh. -huh. Okay. Clips in with the small boat, Davit. Go for a super tall, super tall. I prefer more smaller funnels if I can, which I don't think we're going to be able to maintain speed, so I'll keep it with these even though that efficiency is down. I have two back F. What are our guns? 14 inch. That should be big. We will indeed use 14 inch guns. Potentially in New Mexico. Accuracy doesn't take too big a hit. But what are our marks? Oh, well, we do take a hit going to 14. So it's do you want that extra thousand damage? Oh, that's a pretty big hit in reload time, too. Fourteens do make historical sense. Tempted to do it just for that. Sure, we'll make a New Mexico. Not that it looks like New Mexico at all. Basement wise, we actually fit a pair of sevens. Pretty limited arc on those, but they're there. Fives on the side, also with a pretty limited arc. Is on the bridge. And that's it. Secondary guns we'll have to place. Can we place any? Don't look like we can place them on the superstructure at all. And the fantail and forecastle are a bit crowded. Unless I want to sacrifice. Block these? Hmm. Apparently that doesn't count as blocking it. And that is super firing, so it shoots over them. Nice. So we could have a set of 8 inch if we really wanted. That's enough of an accuracy hit. I think duels would be much better. Aesthetically, I kind of want to rotate them forward. That's not going to happen. 
can stick more fives back here. No, not even fives. Fours? Okay, I can get the fours in there. Not that they'll survive long. But they also don't weigh very much. Beetle launchers, we only have underwater ones. And I'll take them. I don't think I'm going to bother with bow or stern ones. Just one each side. Each ship will have them. Yeah, that's, that's nothing as far as weight goes. Now to put her on a diet. Actually, what speed would she go at? We just left her. Hmm. And I have the speed. She really does need a diet. That's 3%. That's another 3. Brings us to 21 and a half knots, which that makes it a US standard. Uh, we haven't done uh, armor yet, though. Our armor effectiveness. Armor quality is exactly double. So, if we wanted point blank protection, I'm not suggesting we do that, it would be 25.6 to have just enough. And for Point eight. That makes us immune to our own guns. Which is a bit silly. Um, so let's push this out to five kilometers for prim primary protection. Is pretty close. Twenty-one point four. We'll leave the conning tower and turret at immunity. Not that it's actually immune. And um, belt extended. We'll do fifteen seventeen point six. And same for secondaries. Makes them vulnerable, but a lot of weight. That's no, not that much. It's enough, though. Every little bit's going to matter as we trim this. Deck immunity, I kind of want to keep. But, we can trim the extended to 3.5. And does save us quite a bit. That's pretty gosh darn heavy. As you can see, the belt is one third of the ship's, or uh, 28 29%. Bulkheads are number four. Her armor is pretty high up there. So yeah, he's heavily armored. That's 9%. And brings it down 4%. Where else shall I make the sacrifice? 
A little bit there. Four percent there. Oh, that is almost nothing. Basically, if I want any improvements, it's going to cost me 2%. I'll go with sluggish turrets then. Hmm, where to make up the rest? So we are going to go with standard speed. Go down to induced. So good. Natural. Actually, we have enough capacity with natural. That that's terrible. Natural ventilation. Wow. Improves floatability, but it does make it heavier. Cost really isn't a factor at this point, so we can do the gear turbines for a change. Hmm. Do we sacrifice a little bit more armor? Let's see, 15, 19, 0.5. And bring the tower to 21.4. Bring the secondaries to 14.3. Okay, that was a hefty chunk. Although, do I really care about any of these secondaries? What is immunity for them? In normal 16? They have, but we're not intending to get that close. So, 8.2. Again, their armor doesn't cost much, but... Save everywhere we can. Do we drop the deck at all? 4.2. Leave the deck extended at 3.5. We'll bring that down to 2.8. Which I apologize, I'm not really saying exactly what ranges that provides immunity for. Deck extended is good to 12 and a half kilometers, all numbers in kilometers. The deck is good within 17 and 17.5, and the belt is good outside of seven and a half. The belt extended is good. Outside of twelve and a half, which the way armor is modeled in this game, I do not like doing a split. I like to have immunity or not, or belt extended and belt. But there's no way I'm going to be able to fit all of this. I could drop to duels. Gets us a bit of the way there. That gets us a bit of the way there. That is so insignificant. We'll re 
revisit that one. Drop the torpedo protection altogether. We're going to drop down anti flooding. I really, really want all of it. Because it gets rid of flooding, and once a compartment's fully flooded, it typically doesn't get repaired. So being able to repair flooding quickly is very, very useful. Take a hit into the shaft, and insignificant artillery machinery, insignificant. We have the geared turbines. Don't want to sacrifice a lot of these other things. Don't want to sacrifice the armor either. Brutal. Sorry guys. Now some of you complained about me sent into minimum bulkheads. Could get a half knot of speed. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go full American standard. The uh, standards being a set of design constraints that the I'm not within all of, but uh, one of the that Congress set for the Navy for building battleships for quite a period. Pretty much everything from World War I to World War II, just before World War II, was a standard type and they were limited to 21 knots. We beef up the extended. We'll do that. Add a dash to the secondaries, and I think we have a ship. Not sure I've made great design choices here, but uh, let's see how she does. Oh dear. Okay, we've got a little bit of lag. Also have quite a few squadrons. I may reorganize some of this. Take the North Dakota. to Quadrant 1, Arkansas will go to Quadrant 1, Florida will go to Quadrant 3, Rhode Island will go to Quadrant 3. And then we'll grab both of these and put them into the new Squadron 3. So we have three five-ship squadrons. We'll use our battle squadron battle cruisers as a fifth one. Okay, that's gonna muck with the AI some. Good grief. What is our range for our primary squadron? I almost want to line them up in one long 15 ship style, but I think we'll keep three five squadron ships. Ah, something we should do immediately. Seventeen knots. Oh dear. What does this look like? Who is receiving this?
main gun or whatever it is. Trusting the fire control for my ships. The battle cruisers will leave at max speed. What are they doing? They're turning in. Oh yeah, they're all mucked up. Battle cruisers have no armor. Good grief. But they have four dual turrets, decent secondaries. I might just let them do their thing. Who on our side is taking a lot of gunfire? Looks like Indiana. It's gonna be hard to keep up with all this. Indiana is sitting at approximately 12 kilometers, so yeah, we're about right. Let's get broadside. Connecticut. I'm with you. Up you down to 17. And the Colorado. Nope, Bainbridge is the lead ship. Having most likely collided with the Vermont. Charging right in. What's the speed drop for this? We'll stay at the high end of. We'll get a little bit of a cruise bonus. Not a ton, though. Actually, yeah, we'll leave it on 24. So many shells hitting the water. And you're drowning out the sound channels. I did not hear that front gun fire. This accuracy is atrocious. Hey, main gun destroyed. Excellent. try to exert some sort of command and control over this situation, but I may just hit AI auto at some point. Like some people are firing it on the others. There's the forward guns firing at least. Audio wise, veritable hailstorm. Only a light damage to one of the ships. Hey, we took a pay hit, partial pen. We've had three penetrations, three overpens, ricochets, and some bounces. Oh, nice. That's a good uh, hit to their accuracy. And we have what looks like a dreadnought style ship, HMS dreadnought style, except it doesn't have the wing turrets. Positively identify the battle cruisers.
up through their fleet. Take a look. Now these are still the Dreadnought styles. There's a battle cruiser. Judging it by their silhouette. It's triples. Nice. Hmm, they decided that's a little too close. Maybe they shouldn't have approached. Fully broadside now as well. Oh, nice. The funnel is nicely nestled in with their conning tower, thus partially protected. It'd be nice if there were a post-battle summary of effectiveness of gunfire for each individual type of ship. Not necessarily each individual ship, although that would be interesting. I'm more interested in how each design performed. For me at least, there is a little bit of visual lag. Not a lot. Hey, we've identified them. The Albion, 21,000 tons. 23 and a half knots. Armor's thin. They're using two powders. I have good penetration statistics. Ah, oh, too bad collision damage isn't on. Then again, we would be suffering from that as well. Bonk. There are collisions everywhere. Focus on the enemy fleet. You know, you know what? That makes me think that's going to be silly. Hey, the Duke of York. He's missing a turret now. Not much. Definitely a dreadnought design. Secondaries are almost non existent. That's kind of cool to just watch. The Achilles now missing a turret. Like five and a half knots, so they have multiple designs. Oh, that's the battle cruiser, that's why. And that has virtually no armor. I think we have this in the bag. Enough so that doubling the number of ships that they get, similar to how the British had in Jutland, might actually be useful. But then again, we realize that we have no cost limit. Whereas they are just kind of designs. Probably without a cost limit, and just design similar to how we are, but they're they have certain strictures and randomization that they use. It's all suspicion on my part. This look like from a distance. is terrible. Their accuracy is actually fairly... Nope, that's 60% ladder. Got it. The 
other way. The American fleet spread out. Should go back and try to organize them some. Speaking of which, we do have a ship that has rudder damage. 14 inch penetrations but we are looking at the accuracy should maybe uh, look at organizing things a bit yeah the front line's taking several hits now sitting at 9 kilometers which is a bit close are still sorting themselves out. It's not all one-sided. Angle out a Point at them out a bit. Main bridge. If we can't catch you up. Actually, let's leave you at seventeen. We'll have another they're going to be slowing down anyways. Designate a target, a target, since I'm letting them do their thing. Emperor of India and Bulwark being the primary targets right now. Definitely trying to close range within our armor limit. And with the uh, minimum bulkheads, we're Definitely susceptible to more damage. And then again, they are using minimum. There's one of the battle cruisers. And minimum. We're on even playing ground there. And this is so many ships. There we go. Flooding up forward. encompass the whole battle. Watching shells arc at each other. And see the higher muzzle velocity of the ballastite. These are flatter trajectories whereas the uh, tube powder the British are using kind of arcing up a little bit more. A lot of flooding damage. Ooh, nice hit. Oh, she's done. Yep, she's flooding down. Alright. 
actually designate a target now. Everyone is on the Malaya. Which I don't know how you would achieve target lock like this. Target lock in these conditions with so many ships firing, so many splashes. You'd have no idea which ones were yours. There's something Rule the Waves does a little bit better where generally they one for one line up to avoid penalties for firing at the same ship, which, here he is. percent hit we have 3.7 it did take a 20% hit to three having three barrels which is fine the extra barrel it evens out not very tonnage efficient we have our first flooding hit Some of them are shifted target. Most of the fleet is targeting the Malaya though. Alright, what is Anna's reign? Out 13 and a half, so we'll angle in. Rhode Island is still at 9. Cambridge is starting to pull ahead of the Rhode Island. And the battle cruisers. All scattered still. Up it to 20. I'm gonna step away for a moment and let this go. running out of time, so I'm going to accelerate this, see how things go. Uh, we'll leave it auto, auto. I know, I'm crazy. Let the AI have control. And just see how things perform. Canopus. What happened to the Malay? Oh, there she is retreating. And it's just taking quite a bit of damage. I know I'm getting some flickering and everything. It is a lot going on. Oh wow, they messed up the Queen Mary. All scattered now. What are they doing? The angled in looks like still completing the turn. Yeah, everything from here. Anapis successfully retreating behind the line. Queen Mary did not make it though. The battle cruisers well, did take quite a bit of hits. Bunch more 
more rounds hit, not hitting the bend bow. Jeez, all that wasted shell fire. I'm glad I went with increased. Bell capacity because I think we are tearing through. Oh, there we go. There's a hit on the Bembo. And a hit on the Long Beach. What is the range on these torpedoes? Seven kilometers, which we haven't been in. Historically, that is why torpedoes started being removed from battleships. The range extended out to the point that they couldn't really hit. Vanguard now taking the brunt. But Bembo will retreat. Stick the battlecruisers on, see if that'll work. Gonna use them as a cleanup force for targeting. Vanguard, I think, is going to flood out straight up. Well, looks like they got it under control. Hail of 7 inch coming in on the Bembo. If you could see that a few seconds ago. There we go. Nice flooding on the bows. Ooh, progressing to the forward engine compartment. One more penetration, we should be good. Some floating. Oh, oh, the how's going down. We do have one ship in bad shape, New Jersey, looks like. And it looks like that's permanent, too. Pinbo. Piss. Hibernia is close. Anybody shooting at Hibernia? Uh, looks like she's got it under control now. Yeah, damage to the main gun, not a big deal. We're taking damage, especially as we're getting in closer now. Magnificent's going down. Yeah, she got within the danger zone. Or accuracy. Achilles looks like she may be next. Yeah, she's going down rapidly. That's a lot of flooding. Like the Bembo just might be the uh, next target naturally.
There's some flooding. Auto targeting of the illustrious. Oh yeah. Pinbo is definitely being targeted. Another big salvo. Nope. Oh no. There we go. Oh, there's the flooding. And the hail fire. I'm kind of surprised the superstructure hasn't gone down at this point. Oh, flooding on one of ours, the main bridge. And the Bembo is going down due to flooding. Switch to the campus. Oh, these ones got way out of position. Thought I'd set them all on AI. Somebody's going to tell me I didn't. Well, it looks like we almost lost our ship. The Bainbridge. Flooding now under control. And we have... Distant Montana. Very distant. Rhode Island, Colorado, focus you on the Hibernia, and the battle cruisers are focused on Annabeth. Looks like they're beating a retreat. amount of gunfire. Take so completion, I'll accelerate it, but I am actually running out of time and need to be somewhere. At this point, I, I'm already ready to claim victory. We have dominated. If we have to, we'll give the AI numbers. Maybe a standard practice from now on. like their entire fleet sort of retreating. Yeah, yeah, these are still the closest. Oh, jeez. All of that gunfire. The rain. 15.7. Far. 10.4. 7.9. Now that the half the British fleet sunk, 
a little bit of visual lag. Mostly it's just the flickering of the primary armament trails. And then only really due to acceleration. So even without the optimization, ooh, they got a good hit on the Hibernia. Even without the optimate optimization, since this is still very much in early alpha, the it looks like you may be able to do Jutland style or uh, sized combats. Which was part of the reason of doing this evaluate. But I don't know as it's quite there yet. I mean, we'd have to add something like 60 cruise, light cruisers and quite a few destroyers as well. Yeah, they're flat out retreating at this point. This has been the longest single battle I think we've ever done. The first part was largely without acceleration though, so it was as natural. Well, that's some pretty significant flooding. Yeah, that's gonna be it for her. Bernie is down. And now they are far enough out that we are seeing smoke. We have not lost a single ship. We have downed. Say, I, I'll have to look at the post production, see how many ships we got. It's not insignificant. Quite a few. And with our standard speed, we're not going to be able to catch up. So, I'm going to go ahead and leave the battle. I'd say that went uh, pretty, pretty well. Very well indeed. I hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate you staying to the end. Please leave a comment. Let me know if you'd like to see a little bit more of that, or if you've been enjoying examining very specific parts of the game with the Naval Academy, as we have been recently. I'm good for uh, either. We do some historical reenactments. Pseudo, since you can't really set the enemy ships very well. But they're at least the right nation. But regardless, I am out of time at this point. So I will see you next time. Take care.